we just watched a short video that had to do with uh, water and how it dissolves sodium chloride, which is an ionic polar substance. Uh, and the takeaway from that might be that it's really good at dissolving anything that's got charges, which would be any ionic substance, but it turns out that's not the case. It turns out that there's actually several ionic compounds that water can't do a thing with. And there's not really an easy rhyme or reason kind of rule of thumb you can follow uh, that helps you just kind of memorize these. Instead, what we have is we've got a set of solubility rules, okay? And what we're going to look at today is how to use these rules to predict whether a substance is soluble or insoluble in water. Okay? So, y'all work this along with me. You need to be sure that you've got a periodic table where you can, like, look up stuff or groups. You also need to make sure that you've got one of our little ion charts here in case you're unfamiliar with some of the names of the ions. Now, while well, since we've done this, there's a good chance you might be. Okay, for the way that these rules work, if you take a look with me, um, what we're going to do is, given, say, example A here, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to look at each of these rules, starting with rule number one. Now, if rule number one tells us whether this is soluble or insoluble, then we stop with rule number one. If rule number one has nothing to do with this substance, then we go on to rule number two. If rule number two tells us about it, we stop right there. If not, we move on to rule number three, etc. It's important that you follow these in order uh, to help you predict whether something will or will not dissolve in water. So if we've got the word soluble, okay, it almost looks like the word able is stuck in there, and that's how you remember this, okay? It means it is able to be dissolved, okay? That's easy. So if something is insoluble, it's just the opposite. It is unable to be dissolved in some way. And you can also have some situations where something is slightly soluble or where something's only soluble in hot water, but We'll, we'll see if we run into any of those. Let's take a look at our first substance right here, this BaNO3 2. Okay. Um, we're going to start with rule number one. Rule number one says that all common compounds of group one and ammonium ions are soluble. What does it mean by group one? So on your periodic table, this group right here, this first column, that's group one. So we're looking to see if we got lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. Why am I not mentioning hydrogen? No, it's only in group one, but it's not a what? It's a non metal. Well, it is a non metal, it's not a metal. Oh. And all of these are metals here. Okay. So, uh, if you take a look, BA, what is BA? It's barium, right? It's not in that first group. Okay. And y'all remember ammonium? Ammonium would be NH4. Okay. None of those apply to our first substance here, right? Okay, so rule number one doesn't help us out. Let's go on to rule number two. Rule number two says all nitrates, acetates, and chlorates are soluble. So if we're not sure what any of those are, we can look them up on our blue chart. What is nitrate? It's NO3, right? It's over here in the negative one column. So that's NO3. And actually, if you take a look at our sample, does that give us our answer? Yes. Because there's a nitrate right there. So all nitrates are soluble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to A. And I'm going to write soluble. And I'm going to also write rule number two. Because rule number two is where I found the answer. Uh, let's go down to B here. We have ZNS. Okay. Let's start at the top, rule number one. Rule number one, all common compounds of group one and ammonium ions are soluble. Uh, Zn is zinc, right? Okay. Is zinc in group one? No. Nope. Okay. So we move on to two. All nitrates, acetates, and chlorates are soluble. Does that apply to what we have right here? 
Nope, because that's just sulfur, right? Okay. Let's look at your uh, look at rule three. All binary compounds. What does binary mean? Two. Yeah. So a binary compound would be just two elements. This is a binary compound, right? I just have zinc and I just have sulfur. Binary compounds of the halogens. Ah, wait a minute though. Where are the halogens at? Check the periodic table. On the table. Okay, they're over on the right. Okay, that's group 17. Okay. And you know that because you know you've got your little color coded thing that tells you, hey, those are the halogens. Okay. So that's not here. So it has nothing to do with halogens. I think it's important to mention here this little bit right here that lead halides, PV halides, are soluble in hot water. So if you run into a compound of lead and one of these, like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, etc., you need to be sure to write soluble in hot water. But that's not us right now, so we move on to rule number four. All sulfates are soluble. Now, wait a minute. Is this a sulfate? It's got sulfur in it. Go find sulfate for me on your blue chart. What's the formula for it? SO4. Okay, so sulfate is SO4. That's not sulfate, right? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so 4 doesn't do it for us. I uh, think it's important to note, though, on number 4, because this is going to come up later, when it says the latter three are slightly soluble. Latter just means the last ones, and so when we're talking about lead, silver, and mercury, Sulfates, if you have one of those, then you would write slightly soluble form. Okay? All right, number five, except for rule one, carbonates, hydroxides, oxides, silicates, chromates, and phosphates are insoluble. Does that, do any of those apply to this guy here? Doesn't look like it. Okay, it's got sulfur in it. So now that we come to rule number six, sulfides, aha! I think that's our boy, are insoluble. Well, but wait, there's exceptions, except for calcium, barium, strontium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and ammonium. Um, is that any of those? No. It is not. So it's a sulfide, and it says here sulfides are insoluble. So I'm going to write out beside this insoluble. And for my justification, I'm going to put rule number six. Okay. And it really is just that easy. Okay, the tricky part of today is making sure that you're very, very thorough and understanding what each rule is actually telling you before you move on to the next rule. And if a rule tells you what to do with it, you stop. Okay? So, excellent place for questions. Does anybody have one? Okay. All right, then I am done talking. I'm going to give you some time to... Uh, take a crack at these and I'll make you this deal. Uh, you can choose any two from the ones we haven't worked and if you've got a question about it or if you're stuck on it, we can take a look at any two of those together. Okay, so just let me know and good luck.